Hey Hodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're headed back to June 2022 and we are going to look at the things that I purchased last June and we're going to talk about whether or not they're still in my makeup collection and whether or not I thought they were a good purchase for me. If you happen to be new to my content, hi, welcome. My channel is about loving my makeup collection as it currently is while being critical of new makeup releases and being discerning about what I invite into my makeup collection. It's a little bit different now. My channel has grown and I want to talk a little bit about that later on in the video. So I do reviews occasionally whenever I feel so inspired to. So this kind of content sounds like the kind of thing that you would be into. I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. There's no pressure to you. I'm just so happy that you are here. And I also have merch. I've heard the cries. I will make, I think I'm just gonna, the Hody logo that's on the sweatshirts, I think I'm gonna put it on some tank tops and some t-shirts, and that way you can buy those up if you would like. You're, give me a moment though, my life is very busy right now. My current patrons, first of all, thank you so much for being current patrons, and I filmed getting ready for this video. So if you wanna see that, that'll be there when I get to editing it, because it probably will go up after this video. <laughs> after looking at my purchases last year, I bought some stuff from Ms. Amea. I bought the Industrial Palette and I also bought the Rubber Lash Mascara. Those were the only two things that I purchased from the brand. They actually didn't come to me until July and then that was when I posted all the content about them and let's review. So let's start with the Rubber Lash because of course I still don't have that in my collection but I also haven't repurchased it which is something I would like to discuss with. Talking about the brand as a whole, which is so funny, I did not realize, I should have looked into this before I filmed the other video where I revisited the eyeshadow palette, which was like not that long ago. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, like my feelings on the brand have like evolved since then, but the Rubber Lash Mascara, I actually really got on with. I really liked it. It was also a $40 mascara. Now, whenever I did my video, I actually did some research on Isamea's philosophy for her brand. And at the time, and I don't know if it's changed, I don't know if this is still where they're headed, Isamea, whenever she was talking about her brand in interviews before the launch of the Industrial Collection, was all about how she said she couldn't see that any of her products that she's designing being on shelves for many years. And that she said that they we're gonna be like, basically like high turnover. So like, it, think of it more as a fashion brand releasing clothing for each season. That was what it, she said at the time. Now, I haven't read any current interviews. I haven't really followed the brand with much interest after this first launch. So I don't know if that changed. But my philosophy was, I'm not someone who like, jumps around mascara wise anymore. Like. There was a time where I was like every three months I was like trying a new mascara, but I've settled that I like the Rubber Lash. Now I, I'm currently testing some other mascaras because I have received mascaras from brands and I also am doing a deep brand review on a brand and I, you know, they have a mascara so I bought the mascara so I could review it. My philosophy is for the mascara that I always want to use, I want to have it on hand. So I just buy that one every time. And while I do think that the Rubber Lash could have been that mascara for me because I did like it, if I don't know what, I don't know how long it's going to be available, why would that be my mascara? And also it's $40. Now I, the mascara I do use and love is the YSL Lash Clash mascara, which is not a cheap mascara, but it's $30. It's not $40. And while that's like, that's like, that's a pretty big jump price wise. And I'm well aware that many people don't want to spend more than a drugstore on mascaras because it's a high turnover product. Like you're not going to be using it forever in a day. Whereas some of those same people can invest $115 or $120 in an eyeshadow palette because an eyeshadow palette it's gonna hang out for a, some time unless it's a cream eyeshadow palette. Do you know what I mean? So I understand and can appreciate that, but $40, too rich for my blood to continue to do. But it was nice to test it. I liked it. It was nice formula. It's like, is it something that you want to try? I think you probably like it if you like a really volumized lash. Oh my God, I have a hair in this crevice and it's so itchy. Do I think the rubber lash was a good purchase? Yeah, I think for the time it was a good purchase. And I think one of the main, I think it's a good purchase for me as a content creator. Was it the best purchase for me as an individual? I don't know, you know, like I don't know about that. However, I was able to group it together in the content that I made with the next thing we're talking about, which is the industrial color pigment palette. The content that I made around this stuff always it performed very well. I was someone who got my video out pretty early and the algorithm did it kindly. It's like, they're not like my best performing videos, but for the time and the amount of subscribers I had in that time, 
it was a worthwhile investment to have the rubber lash, even though most people were more interested in this. So this is the Industrial Color Pigments Palette. I still have it in my collection. Now, if you might be new to me, and if you are new to me, for something to be invited into my makeup collection means it has to be worthwhile. And I did three or so videos last year just like about this and how I feel about it. So like there was like a first impressions and then like a couple weeks later I was like, here's how I'm feeling now. And then there was like my final ish thoughts on it. So I got invited into my makeup collection. Now I don't, I didn't have the same rules, you know, about allowing something to stick around in my collection then as I do now because the turnover in my collection was like not as fast at that point. Anyway, this pet is still in my collection. Now, recently I questioned myself and I said, why do I keep this around? Because I haven't used it in a while. I use this palette so much last year. Like I used it so much last year. I just think it was like, it's like, it was, it's such a good palette for me. I love grungy textured eyeshadows and this that's like what this is that's what this is but up until like last week I hadn't used it at all this year and now since I cracked it open I've used it a handful of times since I recorded that video because it's a good palette for me now it is like an interesting palette and I think if you're like a makeup enthusiast and you haven't interacted with this I think you would like get a lot of value out of interacting with the formulas because they're like strange there's these like this these two blacks are like putty and the one has like blue sparkles in it and then all of these other textures happening in here they're like interesting formulas some people really love this palette some people really hate this palette and i do think that that's just kind of the case of it i happen to be in the camp that really loves it it's very much a palette that i really see myself in and i do you think that for me that this palette was worth picking up? And I do think if you are into these tones and you want to play with like these kinds of interesting and unique textures, then I think it's like a worthwhile thing to explore. Now the brand has come under some hot water within the past year or so <laughs> since this launched. And like, I would encourage you to do your own research about it. I'm not here to tell you to, to guide you one way or the other. I will tell you, it made me feel some kind of a little, I'm not here to like, to, also be the decision maker on what's like worse and what's better and what's not as bad but like it made me feel icky and I think whenever the, the that stuff surfaced it made me feel icky and like then I was like I don't know if I want to play with this as much but it's back in the rotation and it it's a very it's a very it's a very interesting palette now I have now kind of shifted away from the, the brand not only because of the stuff that happened. It happened in like February, maybe January. It happened early in the year. But I didn't like the second collection. The Wild West collection didn't sing to me in the same way. And I thought, well, that's okay. Because like, you know, if they're doing these like quarterly releases and they're supposed to be these high concept things, there's probably going to be a concept in the future. But then the thing that came after that was penis lip balm. So I don't know about that. Like that's not for me. So anyway, I still like watch the brand with like vague interest but I do feel as though this launch went off without a hitch and I and then I think the launches that have happened since have been like more polarizing I guess I actually don't know I haven't really like I don't I don't even follow the brand anymore I was pretty invested when I first bought this because I really liked it and I was like I cannot wait to see what you do and then I just kind of felt disappointed after that anyway but that doesn't mean that this purchase is any worse um but I will tell you this this is something to think about anytime you buy makeup, especially when you're buying makeup from a brand where there's like a person associated with it. Let's just talk about this for a second. We associate the brand Isamea with Isamea French because Isamea's name is a tie to it and Isamea is kind of like the face of the brand. She's in the marketing imagery for the brand. You know, she's in, she's in it. We think of Too Faced, we used to think of Jared Blandino. He's no longer with them. I don't know if he still makes money on them, but you know, we still think about it. I think one of the reasons that KVT Vegan Beauty has had such a, a hard time relaunching and getting into the good graces of people is because Kat Von D was the face of it. It's still the initials of Kat Von D. And we says Jeffree Star. But whenever you think of Tarte, who are you putting the blame? Like when someone at, like, at the person at top of Tarte, who, whose name I do not know, because their name isn't Tardy McTartan. At least I assume that's not their name. I hope I hope that's not your name. Whenever they release a bad shade range, we just go, oh, the entity Tarte is a bad entity. Do you know what I mean? And then like you go from there. I think about that a lot when I buy from smaller brands where they're like the the there's like one person that we associate with the brand is like, and this happens with content creators too, like you know, engaging with content. Like those, you know, these are all things that they all kind of like go hand in hand. Should someone's actions that I like don't love? stop me from using or appreciating a thing that I already purchased before that happened? Or should that stop you from making a purchase? Like I'm, I, we're just, 
I'm just talking about this. I'm not trying to answer the question. It's just like, because I know that happened to me. Like, I know that I stopped using this palette because whenever like the voluntourism stuff surfaced from Isabella, I was like, Ugh, that made me feel icky. And then this kind of like slid into the back of the drawer and then I like stopped using it. And I like didn't pull out every time I saw it. I was like, mm, I don't know that I want to use that. I don't want to use that. But the fact of the matter is like, I love this palette. I should keep using it. And I want to keep using it. I've already spent my money on it. So it's like, what good is it doing sitting in the back of my drawer? And like, I could also pass it on to someone who's like not as invested in the beauty community. And like, maybe that doesn't affect them as much, but I like it and I want it. And it's mine. And I think it was a good purchase. Now let's move on to like the, the secondary. <laughs> let's talk about my budget this year and just like how my relationship with budgeting and beauty has changed a little bit. Now I just talked about this on my Patreon video where like I filmed this look, but I think it's like also okay to talk about here. And I don't know how far I'm going to get into it because I actually did like a, I scrapped a video about this not that long ago. But so I'm just going to try to keep it a little concise. As my channel grows and turns into something a little bit different. The way I approach purchasing beauty has shifted and I think that's okay. But at first and foremost, I actually did budget my numbers. Like I did, I haven't actually been tracking how much I've spent on beauty, but I did this year versus last year. Like I like went through all of the things and I spent about the same amount of money. And I do think maybe subconsciously the way that I had approached my budget at the beginning of the year where I was like, I have like a hundred ish dollars to spend every month on beauty. I was kind of giving myself the grace to see like, am I gonna like, am I gonna falter on that? Is, is that gonna be a problem? I did spend a lot of money on a, a brand review, but like I don't do those all the time. So I don't, I'm not calculating that into my monthly budget. That was like, it's like an exception to the rule, but like I'm not out here buying all of the new releases. Now this month I did buy a couple of things that were new that I wasn't expecting. So I did buy the Yucca palette and then I also bought the golden primer from Victoria Beckham. This was like, this was a surprise. This was a surprise. I have, I'm not super, I have not been super interested in new eyeshadow releases, but like this one came out and like so far it's, I've used it a couple of times and I've really been liking it. And I think that it's going to be a palette that like has legs in my collection because of the color story and the formulas and I've been really enjoying them. And this, I was a purchase. I'm, I just, I don't feel like I'm making silly purchases. And I think think that my journey with like spending on beauty has changed and I'm I don't know that I have the same challenges that other people who are in this space have. Did I used to? Yes. And uh, but I've like already kind of done the steps. Now, do I make missteps and I am I always falling in like the exact $100? No, cuz this was $96 and then I I used coupon. I had some like Sephora credits for, for this. So like I did, I spent like $40 on this instead of $65 and I've, you know, so that's like more than a hundred dollars, but I like, I don't, it doesn't feel out of control for me. I like, you know, it's not a high risk. I do like Natasha Denona formulas. And I did think that this form, like this eyeshadow palette looked pretty good. And like, I already have the regular version of this and I like wanted to try the golden version of it. I think those are a completely acceptable purchases. And I'm not trying to justify my purchases for you. I also think that the way that I see the beauty industry now from what I'm doing is just different. I don't often get excited personally when I see launches of makeup anymore unless it's something very special and then the very special things are the things that I have to sort through to decide whether or not that there's something I'm going to purchase either for for my own curiosity or for the curiosity of the channel while I do buy some things for review I even try to be careful about what I buy for review because I really try hard not to go into a review with Ill will. So if I like luminous or skin finish foundations, I don't want to buy an ultra matte foundation just because it's like the popular thing to do. That doesn't make any sense. And I think I have done a good job this year really discerning like what is worth my time in. Whereas before, before this change of thought that I had and what could I, how can I t explain to you how I've changed my thoughts around it? I, it is simply because my channel has grown. And so now I'm starting to get products in that like I might not have been just disinterested in sort of altogether. I'm getting PR now and I'm also getting like friend mail from friends that like where they're sending me things that they think I might be interested in. And sometimes I'll buy things on the recommendation of 
you know, other content creators like saying directly to me, not like just in their videos, they'll be like, I think you should invest your time and money into exploring this and then I do. I think that I see my collection just very differently. I know in a very real way that the amount of makeup I have is like, it's never going to be used up solely by me. And I know that. And so I just, I really am discerning about like what gets to stick around. So it's, it, it's in all of my videos, but I don't do explicit content like talking about that anymore. Like I do within the confines of the video. So I think a good example of this would be in my video from Tuesday. I talked about the two coral blushes that I have. And I was like, I don't need two coral blushes. And I think there were people sometimes in the comments will be like, well, you can use both in like comparisons. But like my makeup collection is still my makeup collection. And I think that like, that's how I want my channel to feel is that like, I'm navigating as this is like, this is my makeup collection. And like, you're joining me on that journey to like, find the good things. And obviously, I still do reviews and stuff. But when I do those reviews, not all, everything just automatically gets to stay in my collection. I'm not trying to do something where I'm like, going to be the person you turn to for swatches and such, because I don't have the capacity for that. Like, and I don't have the mental capacity for that. I don't have a desire to buy every shade and everything to be able to do that for you because that's not the kind of thing that I want my makeup collection to turn into. I want to find the good stuff and I want it to stick in my collection and I want to get rid of the bad stuff. And the bad stuff I'm saying loosely, the stuff that isn't perfect for me or the stuff that doesn't perform the way I want it to. That's what I want my makeup collection to be. And I and viewing all makeup also through this channel under that lens where it's like it only gets to stick around it only is good if I view it as good not if other people view it as good so while I do think the house labs blush was really good it wasn't better than the Dior blush and that's why the Dior blush got to stick around they're very similar I do allow some overlapping in my collection of like things that are kind of similar. I don't need to have every blush that sort of looks like Mimi from West Mentalia, or I don't need to have every orange blush that sort of looks like Kiss of Copper from Bare Minerals. Like I don't need, to, like that's not what I'm interested in doing. So I think by the nature of being discerning what, about what I allow into my collection, I think I'm also discerning about what I'm spending for like review and personal purchases. And they're all kind of blending together. Now I did at one point want them to be separate thoughts, but I, in separate entities in my brain and in my budgeting where it's like this is for review and this isn't but I really only want to review things that I think I might like so I'm not gonna buy a thing just to review it now as I get PR that's a little bit of a different story but even if I get PR if I start getting PR that I'm not like 100% interested in or like if I start getting PR in excess I'm not gonna review all of it because I don't have the time and the a speed at which I like to review products doesn't allow me to have space and time to review things that I don't think I might be interested in. So if I get a hot pink blush from a brand, unless it's like a formula that I'm very interested in trying and they only send it to me in hot pink, then I probably am not going to keep the hot pink blush. So like I, I, that's like where I'm approaching it. So it's interesting that I've kind of like let, and I know that not everyone can do this. Not everyone can let go of the concept of a budget and live in that space and like know that it's going to be okay but that's what's happened is I had if we were let's if let's circle back for anyone who might be newer to my channel I was out of control spending on beauty in t before 2021 halfway through 2021 I did like I zoomed out and I was like I'm spending way too much money I have more than I can use and I'm I'm buying things frivolously just because I've I think I can and I feel like I need to touch all of the things I went on a no buy for six months and then that was that second half of 2021 in 2022 I budgeted all year and then this year I've been like a little bit loose with how I'm spending my money as far as makeup consumption goes and what I'm finding is that I'm continuing essentially without tracking it the way that I was budgeting in the year of 2022. Now, I, you know, I do now make more money on YouTube than I did last year through my Patreon, through, you know, AdSense and all of that. So I do have like a little more wiggle room, but I also don't want to spend all of that money on makeup either. Now, I do think as my channel continues to grow, this, con this feeling that I'm feeling now is subject to change. And I think what both myself and hopefully you, anyone who views my content, allows that to grow. But just know that the way that I approach products and the way that I approach reviews hasn't changed. Is it a good, like, I'm going to let you know 
that. I'm going to view it as like, would I spend my money on this? Or have I spent my money on this? That's like always, it's like, is it worth that money? Whether or not I have spent that money on it. And that's how I will always, you know, bring the information to you. I think that's all I have to say on this. That's my piece. That's my truth. And I'm ready to wrap up the video. So if you happen to be new and you want to stick around and see what else goes on on this channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. And I'm also on patreon.com again if you would like to support me there. No pressure again. Whatever you want to do. Anyway, I will see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye. Um,